Uh, welcome to Making React Paragraphs, uh, Bad Camp, October 22. My name's Mark Casillas. I'm a Drupal Tech Lead in uh, at Canby Studios. Uh, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I play in a band. No one reads bios, no one cares. I have Twitter handles. Um, <clears throat> Canopy is hiring. If you're looking for a great job where you can work wherever you want with some wonderful people um, like myself, and Anne, and Sean, who's not said he was going to be here, but is not. Um, it's a nice company. We, we do a lot of fun work, um, and I recommend it highly. Go to canopy.com and get a job. Uh, I use the same slide, so never mind that. I also do uh, work for a, a, a thing called graymuzzle.org. We raise money uh, to help homeless uh, elder dogs get... Uh, get uh, adopted, um, feel free to go to graymuzzle.org and donate. Uh, I also am in charge of upgrading their site from D7 to D9, but since I do it for a living, it's a very slow process, um, so it hasn't been done yet. I've been using this slide, talking about my upgrade to D9 for a good, since D8 was starting, um, so I got that going for me. Uh, this is my dog, her name's Drew, she's my pal. Um, I'll let you get the joke on your own. All right, so we're going to be talking about decoupling, progressively decoupling uh, React apps into Drupal. Um, when I started this uh, as a training, uh, I just kind of wrote a bunch of notes and we did it on the fly. Um, so th and for this case, we're going to do it in an hour and uh, we're going to do it in, uh, as kind of a slide demo. So the, there are slides, I will share them out later, um, and they do work, I think. A um, couple use cases that we've done this with uh, at Canopy Studios, uh, there's a company called TR Electronics. Uh, they did a product search, and that is a React app. Basically, the use, use case for that is they have all their content in Drupal, and then they have one small area that's a React app that you search for those products, and then you get the ones that you want. It's very interesting on this one because they have just part numbers as their description. Mm -hmm. And everybody's supposed to know what those part numbers are and apparently they do. I tried to add more description to it. They're like, no, no one will care about that. So anyway. Um, <laughs> also, we did some work with uh, a local airport and uh, did a flight tracker. Now we hooked up to their API against the flight tracker using React and then pulled that into a block um, or I believe it was a paragraph as well. Um, that way you can get updated information while you're looking at your, uh, looking for your flight. And finally, actually, the very first time I did this was with another company, uh, Weather.com. We were using Angular applications <clears throat> instead of React, but we were decoupling that, and that started the whole decouple days. Oh, I should have had a slide up about decouple days. Um, uh, through this whole process, we started use, doing uh, decouple days in New York City. Uh, this just came, came to pass in August, last August, uh, where we talk about not just Drupal, not just CMSs, but also how to decouple the sites using Gatsby, using Next.js, everything. Um, it's very interesting. If you're interested in this, uh, go to decoupledays.com, and they'll, well, you'll see last year or this last one that's just passed. All right. So first question people always ask me is, where do you put this? Uh, do you put it in a custom module? Do you do it as a, a theme, or, or do you do it as a library? If you're doing a custom module, it's really good for blocks uh, because blocks are encased in a module and you can just push them in that way. Um, after we go through my demo, if we have time, um, I will actually create a block uh, because I didn't think I'd fill the entire hour, so I thought that would be a good way to finish it off. Um, another thing you could do is in a library, and that's really good if your React application is shared amongst other things. Uh, you can make that a, a composer object and then put it in the libraries area. The only problem with that is that you have to still modify your theme or module to know where that is uh, using the library's uh, YAML. Um, so that's very good. So most of the time I put them in custom themes because usually JavaScript is in the theme realm and since React is JavaScript, I always do it that way. So I'm going to do a quick, I hope, does everybody can see it a little bit? I, I'm sorry if it's hard to see. Um, I'm going to do kind of a quick demo um, on creating a paragraph and a theme. Um, so the first thing you do is I've created a, a custom th uh, theme called My Custom Thing. Just added a, a, a folder, JavaScript, templates, that's something that you're gonna need and I'll show that later. Of course you need an info.yaml and then you're gonna need a libraries.yaml. And this is the, the, the base of the theme that you're gonna need. 
First thing you want to do is you're going to want to create, and uh, this is where the pointing of my, my pointer would work. You're going to want to create a small folder inside there called whatever you're going to want to uh, put in your, call it. I called this one the app thing. Um, you'll notice that it generated uh, based on this, oh, go back, go back. Uh, first thing you want to do is do an npm init, and what that does is it creates a package.json, which makes it an npm package. Um, then I did an npm install on dev of Babel and Webpack, uh, and so, uh, yeah, just pretty much Babel and Webpack for dev dependencies. And, uh, and if you look down towards the bottom, on the, so on the left is the folder structure, on the right is the actual file itself. Um, down the bottom is the dev dependencies, and then uh, in the middle there you see the dependencies of React and React to DOM, and that's pretty much all the things that you want to have. Um, a lot of people start their applications with a, a Create React app, and that is going to give you too much stuff. A Create React app thinks that it's going to be the single page and React is going to be the only thing, so you kind of want to piecemeal it together uh, instead of doing that. Um, next thing you want to do is create a Webpack config. Webpack is a task runner, and basically it does a bunch of little tasks for you and then bundles everything up for you. Um, and this one basically is doing just the babbling, uh, which is all you really need to do on this because the, the React app will, will uh, build on its own. Um, so, but you want to kind of add that in there and that's kind of a default one. And like I said, I'll share these slides um, once they're done. Um, one thing I forgot, speaking of Babel, on the package.json, you actually want to add the uh, Babel presets on there. Fortunately, that line there of IE, greater than equal uh, 11. Uh, we don't have to worry about that line anymore now, do we? Um, so this is what you get when you copy and paste a lot of stuff. Anyway, um, so that basically says, makes sure that the Babel uh, is, a, is a thing that converts all React into just generic JavaScript for you, uh, which is really nice to do. Next thing you want to do is create your React app. Uh, and this is a very, very basic React app. It uh, imports React. Line one. Line two imports render from React DOM. And then uh, lines four through nine uh, creates a, uh, an object called app. And then it just makes some HTML. It just creates something. You could do anything you want in there. I went with very, very simple. Then the bottom line is the, uh, the one that really matters, the render. Because basically that, what it does is it says, okay, take app and then stick it in wherever the query selector of my target uh, React, my React target ID is. And what that will do is that'll create the React app for you. Um, and that's as generic a React app as you can get. Uh, next thing you want to do is create a, uh, a template that basically gives the I div ID of my React target. And then you'll notice that I put it in templates as a paragraph dash dash React target HTML dot twig. Basically, all my paragraphs that are going to be called React Target are going to just output this. And uh, it's funny as I put the content in there, but frankly, there is going to be no content, and I'll show that you that why uh, well, later. Um, if you're big on using attributes, you want to make sure you do it without ID, um, and then set the ID yourself. So that's all you need for your template. And I lied, but I'll show you why later. Next thing you do is you build your, uh, your, your React app, and that's running npm build. Um, once you build it, uh, you get this dist folder, and I forgot I put that fade in there, so it kind of freaked me out. Um, so that dist folder actually takes a bunch of stuff, and then it actually has the bundle of the app, bundle.js, which is your configured application that is at the end of the day going to run. Then, you need it as, as libraries. Like I talked about when we're just putting a thing in the libraries, you need something to point it at. And this, if you update your uh, custom thing libraries YAML, um, and you're just pointing it into the JS React app thing, dist app bundles.js, and you're gonna have a good time. Next thing you wanna do is attach your library, of course, and that's the one thing I lied about when I said that's all you need for your, uh, your template file, you need to attach the library. You can do it with custom code. Another, there are many ways to uh, attach libraries, but thankfully Drupal templating system has a nice function that allows you to attach your library. Fine, let's go to Drupal. Now we're in the Drupal world. 
And uh, we're going to create a paragraph type called React Target. Since that was the template file that we created, we want to make sure that we're, uh, we're doing that. So we create that. We really don't need any fields. So then we go to the basic page. And then we create a paragraph reference entity, um, which I wish I had a better uh, picture of that because I forgot to add the going to your you edit your custom or your, your content types, going to basic page, add a field of paragraph. I can show you that in a little bit. Um, and then this just makes it the React uh, target. We hop into create a basic page. We call it test stuff. It adds a little React target on there. We save that and, well, it didn't work. I can't even do a live demo correctly if I pre-recorded, can I? <laughs> um, why? Why do we think that that's possible that this isn't working? Okay. Any? No. This, a lot of people don't know, is the Oliveira theme, not my custom theme, because I didn't create that. So I go into my custom theme, info.yaml, I create a custom theme, uh, you know, make sure the core version requirements on there, I, I did a base class of classy, and then I save it, and oh, once I save it, I go in there and I see my custom thing library or uh, theme available, I install and set as default, and still nothing. Um, that's because, and I uh, figured this out, uh, if I take a look at the console, you'll see that it's saying it's a 404 to my app bundle um, thing. Um, why is that? Go into my library, and I actually, in my folder structure, did not use a React folder inside the JS folder. Um, so once I change that, Save, clear cache, ta-da! My thing saying my custom thing is there. Um, and that's it for creating a block. It's a simple, or excuse me, creating as a paragraph. So I thought what I do now is instead of killing an, <laughs> I can't believe that took me less than 15 minutes. <laughs> awesome! Anyway, um, so now we're gonna do an actual demo. And what I thought, thought I'd do is uh, we do it together uh, we would actually take a, uh, a block and create a custom module out of it. Uh, so we go into our web folder, and I'm, uh, this is hard to see, isn't it? Is that better, worse? So here for, uh, we don't need to mess around with core. Just a, we, this is a quick, this is my D9 thing that I uh, do a lot of development. I'm actually working on the Smart Trim module <clears throat> this weekend. Um, I've actually installed the admin toolbar, devil, uh, paragraphs, and token, a couple other things. Um, but we want to create a custom thing. The first thing I did, actually, because if we take a look at this slide, Classy is very, very ugly. Um, and I don't mean that in a nice way either. So I switched the base theme to Olivero, and then I go to this uh, test site, and now this is my test site, and it has my, the My Custom thing. Oh, before I do that, here's the actual working sites that I took screenshots of. Um, here's the TR Electronics uh, product search, and you can actually see it actually loads things up really quickly, really snappily, faster than the Drupal search going uh, back and forth does. Um, I still have no idea what any of these are, and then you link onto them, and it says what they are. Oh no, it actually just gives you an email. Um, I would like to know about this part number. Um, very interesting site. Um, this is the SFO flight status, uh, which is a React app as well. Um, you know, I gotta ask Ann, because Ann actually worked on this. Uh, what happened to the BART one? Um, we actually did one that interacts with the BART API as well, so you can see when the next BART train's coming in there. But I don't, didn't see it, so I couldn't take a screenshot of that. And then here's Weather Underground, which actually, uh, when I went to take a screenshot, I, I lied. That wasn't Drupal because they have, I guess, since 2015 replaced it from Drupal to just a straight Angular app. But it was progressively developed at one time. Um, but that's how they got get all the information is they actually uh, slurp that in. So anyway, let's create a custom module. Um, first thing I like doing when I create a custom module is closing everything else out. Oh, no, I don't want to close that out. Good, thank you, because I, I created cheat sheets there. 
Um, so I'm going to go into this uh, modules and I'm going to create a new file. We'll go uh, custom and we're going to call it app thing and then app thing.info.yml. Yay, name thing. Um, what is the other thing? Um, core version requirement. Thank you, autocomplete. Uh, we're going to make this for 9 and 10. And what's the other thing that's missing? Oh, type. And that would be a module. And that's all you really need to make a, a module. If we go in here and I'm using DDEV and then I have some shortcuts for DDEV Drush. Um, so that makes everything easier. I can go to extend. And app things there. There's no description. There's nothing in there useful. So that doesn't <clears throat> matter. Of course, one thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a libraries. So we're going to create a new file there. Is that library or libraries? I should get it. It's libraries. <laughs> One day we will learn how to type too. All right. And then we're going to call this the thing. And then JS. Um, and then we're going to finish that later because that doesn't need it. All right. So first thing we're also going to want to do is we're going to want to create, let's create a custom block out of this. Um, so we create a new file and then we're going to call it, it's going to go in the source folder. SCR SRC and then plugins. Thank you. And then blocks. And then app thing.php. We are going to take the thing that I wrote up earlier because I didn't want to sit here and type everything out. Copy that. So app things plugin block, that's the namespace. And then app thing block is actually what it's supposed to be called. Or I could I could either change that here to app thing or call it app thing block, but I kind of like the idea of it having the word block in it. And all this does is it uh, creates a block base, or it creates a class that extends block base. We have to give it an ID, we'll give it the ID of app thing. We give it an admin label and a category. Um, we can actually call this category anything that we want. And all this does is it creates the markup of that same markup that we did with the other uh, HTML.twig and with the attached library in there as well. Um, since this is a module app thing, and then we're going to have the library app thing as well, um, that's really all we need to do that. Um, we could actually run that if we app thing, not, and see that's the thing, app thing instead of the thing. And again, I could have changed this to the thing, but app thing makes more sense. It doesn't really make any sense, but it also doesn't make a difference. So we got that going for us. Um, why's that? Comma. Okay. Always follow your PHP CS, everybody. Makes makes people happy. Um, and why is that still red? Oh, that's the lib library's folder is red because I don't have a finish on the JS. We can actually take that other library and uh, we'll just kind of do the same thing with that. But we call it a different library. Oops, tabbing. Oh, wait. Is that right? No, that should be... 
What am I missing here? I have a feeling that's wrong, but no one's speaking up, so I'm just going to stick with it. That. No? It's not it. Yeah. We'll see what happens. All right. So this is all really all we need to do to create this block. Jesus, I did not fill enough time. All right. Um, so we can actually go here and we can go to block layouts. And let's go ahead and, and place this on all the content. And, oops. and that thing's not there. Why? Anybody? Keep calm, clear cache. Still nothing. What? <laughs> hey, no white screen of death. I'm always happy when that happens. Content. Still no. No, because when you enable a module, that flushes the cast out automatically. <laughs> No. Let's see. And there's something really in the library's path, right? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> well, no, but, but the block. So we should, at that point, have got be. We should still, at this part, be getting an empty block. Right. However, that doesn't really matter because we need to actually create some stuff here. So this is actually going to be easier if I go in here. Where am I? Um, in custom cd dot dot. CD dot dot. All right, so then go into CD into modules, custom app thing. And we're going to make a dir <coughs> JS. Oh, MK JS. And then CD into JS. And then make dir app. Thing, CD app thing. Now we're going to run our friend npm init. This goes through the whole process of it. That's really horrible to see. Let's see. Doesn't make it any easier to see because the lighting in there, but hopefully, those of you following along at home haven't fallen asleep yet. So we're gonna call the package app thing. We could call it something else, version 1.0, description, who cares, um, entry point index.js, which is fine, even though that's not really gonna be the entry point. There's no test command, there's no git repository, and is that okay? And that's what that creates. Cool. Next thing we're gonna do, and I have a, uh, oops, let that do it, command, Let's see, there you go, npm, I already did, the npm install before, although for some reason this gave me an uh, empty space here. So that would have caused a big old error. So we're going to avoid that. Oh, I should have shown you what was built out of that. I guess I still can. So we go into our custom module. Now we have, oops, custom module JS app thing. Now we just have the package.json, which it's actually building as we go along. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill this test script because it's not useful yet. But we don't want, want to kill that. All right, that's all done. And then I'm gonna install React. Uh, why did you put that slash? Uncool. All right, and then as you can see, this gets updated. Dependencies, React, React.dom. 
everything's there. Now we're going to want to create the actual file itself. So we're going to create src slash app.js. Uh -huh. And like I said before, we're going to want to create the webpack. So we're going to create a new file in here. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, what happened there? I'm going to just copy and paste the other webpack. It's easier. Uh, source app.js. Oh, that's a couple of things to point out. This entry point, we want to make sure that that's correct uh, because that's where it's looking for. And since if we would have called this in the source, uh, if we would have called this in the source um, something else, we would have to update this. And then we want to update the bundle name to that as well. Um, the other thing that we want to do is in the scripts, we want to change the scripts folder to match the other one, which again is a nice copy and paste thing that we can do, which adds the build and then the watch, which I'm not using the watch, but that's always good to later. So we have this security thing that asks us to update our apps in the middle of doing stuff all the freaking time. It's awesome. Um, anyway, um... By the way, that was sarcasm. <laughs> uh, so now we have that. Um, oh, the other thing that we want is the Babel stuff. I think I have. I can find that easy. Yeah, there we go. And that is set. Oh, we don't need that extra, but we do need. Oh, that's it. Good. Da -da -da. Everything's there. Cool. We can go into uh, JS. Oh, wait, where am I? CD. So, no, we're right where we need to be. So we can actually, at this point, npm run build. Ta da! We actually have a minimize file. This is updated. The disk folder. Right? So, app thing, disk. Oh. Take a look at the library again. App thing dist app handles JS. So that all should be working there. Now, let's get to our original problem. Source plugin blocks did not work. Let's refresh. Any thoughts on why that might be, people? There's really no um, other in here as much stuff. I mean, I feel like if you've done something terribly wrong with the block PHP, you'd probably get a right to be with that or something. Yep. Oh, well, let's see. File get contents, custom. Oh, that was from earlier t today. Mm. So that was not really, that was when I was building the thing. Can't find the custom logo. App thing is installed. Let's take a look at this again. Correct. Yeah, on build, all I, all the build command is return a markup. <laughs> Let's see. I want to look at the libraries again. We are on the right side of the movie. So the thing I make on the basis. 
Yes. Well, yeah, because that's the. Uh, oh, hold on. Are we? <laughs> I'm on the server, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because test stuff is working. Yeah. All right. We got my custom thing there. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> because the actual folder, here's the thing, you know, like the folder itself, it's called Drupal 9. So um, thanks to the config.yaml, which I guess I renamed to Drupal Dev. Okay, cool. Um, way to confuse yourself, Mark. This is right. Is the thing you're talking in console? Well, no, that would affect us to not see the block. Uh huh. That's logo, that's fine. Block layout. Things enabled. Source plugins blocks. Add things plugin. Plugin blocks. Spelling matters, kids. Or should it be blocks or block? Should be block, which is you say plugins in one place and plugin on the other, and then you look at the name. Ah, okay. So let's actually do this. <laughs> Maybe you have something that's code generator in your version. Eh, I. Tell me someone did that. All right, yeah, cache it shouldn't matter there anymore. Structure, block layout. Still not there. Yeah. Refresh the page. Sacrifice a chicken. Still not there. So what I usually do at this point is I call Marky. Right. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Refresh again. Keep calm, refresh. All right. Now I'm confused. Now I'm pissed. Because <laughs> this should, I'm not seeing anything that's wrong now. App thing. Should just be plugin? Yeah, we could try that. That search widget isn't case sensitive or something. No, it shouldn't be. Source plugin block. Source plugin block. You know what? Let's should, be block, should be blocking in single R there. Uh-huh. There. Then block. Singular. Both. And then plugin and block. Hey! <laughs> Does it really? Uh oh. What was that? Uh, let's go back to site, see what happens. There's the block. Yay! And we can configure the block and remove it, and everything's fine. So.
Yeah. You know, you know that you, you saw that part part of the part of the embedding a react component in group in in Google is Google, you know, the React component. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Like, like, like creating a React app is pretty easy. Uh, getting it in there, and that's kind of what I want to show, um, is how easy it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I had for this because because uh, I didn't think I'd blow through the presentation as quickly as I did. So, uh, are there any questions? I guess. So, what's was the goal of the module basically? Well, the goal of the module was to create a block. Uh, a to create a block that has a React app in, in it. Just for an example, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so that was all it needed to do. And it's uh, like, as you just said, the easiest part about it is all it's really doing is creating this HTML um, that Drupal has to deal with. And once you get that in there, your React app takes over and just the slurps it in. Now the problem is if I added a second block to this, um, of course, we would have a problem because then we would have two IDs of the same. Um, so if you're, you're going to have multiple, or and actually if I were to go to, let's see what happens if I go to um, that custom page that has the block and the module, or the block and the paragraph, um, it just does the one because it, it does, takes the first one in, there. So to solve that, let's change this to, let's see, which one is this? This is the block my plugin or my react block let's change that id now of course we have to go into our javascript source did i clear that did i never create that oh i don't know let's see Let's paste that, and we're going to call this my custom block, and we actually want to change this to my React block, because that's what the block is actually generating now, right? So both of those are saved, we want to go here, and we're going to go to npm build, uh, npm run build okay now we should be getting my custom thing but now we're not getting the content My React target is not getting loaded. Pork A. Oops, wrong one. Unified React error. Oh. Well, that's actually curious that... So let's see, we have my custom thing, inspect, sorry, my react target, refresh, Oh, there we go. My custom block. My cu I never refreshed the page. All right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now we have my React block that has my custom block in there, and now we have my thing, which actually does the same thing because it has separate IDs. And that's the one thing that you want to be wary of. If you have multiple uh, blocks, um, you can actually write your React to search for uh, each of the, you know, do, do it instead of a query selector. Um, like this one does, do a query selector all, which gives you basically an array of items and then you can load it into each one. Um, that's gonna be problematic in the future. 
But anyway, those are things that you can do. Alrighty. Any questions? I, I like it as a block. I think that's nice. And, and what's nice about that, I think we did it with the bar block, if I recall correctly. We placed the block via, we made a, a, a paragraph type that had a block field in the block field module. And then we could place you know, separate instances of the bar block, like wherever we wanted, the content could through the paragraph. So it was, right. like, it was cool. And then in, in, the, in that one, we actually defined you can actually define the ID that you're looking for, and it actually takes that, and in the pre-process, runs that, that uh, argument through to the bar. Yeah. yeah. Do I have that? Can I show it? Yeah. Think anybody would mind if I showed it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, anybody from, <laughs> from pe people who would yell at me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not a sensitive API. It's open to the public. It's a terrible API, though. It's, yes. Um, it's the bar. What's the next train? But the way they do it, it's so weird. What was it? It was instead of telling you the next train that's going to arrive at the airport, they tell you the next train that's going to leave in Barcadero headed for the airport. Yeah. It's just like useless. <laughs> You're the first to leave the train. It's pretty useless. <laughs> but that's what we had to work with. And so I have a feeling it was probably like we took it down. It wasn't the work we did, it was just that the data was nonsensical. Why is my. It's not letting me switch projects. <laughs> saying one unsaved. It's this one that's unsaved. I would like to close you. Is this your visual studio? Yeah. Da, 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 da. Shut up. I was trying to figure out a patch yesterday and Kyle Matthews came up and Something was going weird with the visuals. Uh, VS Code was adding an uh, a extra line to the patch, and then the patch was failing because of the extra line. It's very, very annoying, which I still don't understand why that is. But still, he said, just do it in Vim. And I'm like, yeah, then I'm never going to be able to exit. And... <laughs> All right, let's see. Switch. Open reset. Fly us over. No, don't save. Thank you. So apparently that pop-up was somewhere. Um, so let's see. Yeah, this is the BART one. And that's that. Uh, here's the block for the BART, BART PHP. Um, we're doing a little bit more with the forms. Let's see. Where's that? We actually do, do a custom create. We do get the config with the form. We let them decide what direction they're going, northbound, southbound, um, and then uh, the default is southbound. So southbound trains are the one going to the yeah. airport, even if you're coming from the southern area, and then northbound trains are going from the airport. Um, it's also not future-proof because at some point there will be a bar headed north to the airport. Correct, correct, <laughs> correct. So, um, so this... This is the submit, you know, obviously it saves the configuration for the, the thing. And then in the build here, this is actually where we do that. We create a class of BART schedule block, and then the, we create a data of the direction uh, from the config. We add our library, and then we get this, the, the BART key, which is stuck in the settings. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that was the weird thing too. That um, so if we take a look at our Bart React, Bart React um, source, Bart JS, um, we actually needed to deal with dates, uh, so we included date fu functions. Uh, we imported some fancy styles, uh, which I think there were two lines in that style sheet. Um, the BART API key is set in Drupal settings, which is fine, which is what we said in there. We actually did some logic as to go the different way. Here's the actual API URL 
and then once we did once we started it we did a uh a function called get it which actually goes and gets the uh, the stuff and then oh is that the interval like how does it know when i never understood that okay so th this has it refresh every okay. um, hour yes um 500 milliseconds anyway um so then we actually do some custom logic in here um you know wh which station we're going to um and then we go through each of the items and or because each each call would come the next three trains right. so we could actually say the next train is five minutes away the one after that's 15 minutes away the one after that's 20 minutes away and then we had multiple directions if there's an error we just gave them a nice link saying sorry check the schedule yourself that was the other funny thing is this API goes offline like every day at like 8 p.m. for a couple of hours. Yeah. And then so this this is where I was talking about we instead of doing a, a, a get element uh, by ID, we do get elements by ID or you could actually do a query selector all, which is the same thing. And then for each one of them, we go ahead and render in the direction. And this way we actually had north-south in the same page without a conflict of, of what's going on. Um, and I don't have that spun up, and actually I think I destroyed the uh, environment, so I can't even pull it up, um, so I can't show you. But that's what that one is. Um, the TR Electronic ones... Did I delete that? I deleted that one. Let's see, I can actually get that. Here, electronic D8. I don't know if any of you have seen this functionality. This is my favorite part of GitHub right now. You press the period, and it opens the whole repo in Visual Studio Code in your browser. And that just makes finding files and everything so much easier. Um, Where do you type this period? So you go, go to the repo, and then you hit the period. Oh. And the uh, yeah, yeah, huh? What was that? In the browser. Like yeah, oh yeah, in the browser, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's just Chrome. Um, I, I'm actually on contract with another company and they have their own self-serve GitHub and it doesn't have it installed and I am yelling at them night and day to get that back installed. Um, but they don't seem to want to listen to me. Uh, what the heck? Huh. Try again. Well, I said it was great, but then it didn't work. Look at that. <laughs> um, so we'll do it the old-fashioned way. What we could do is Octotree. This branch was either deleted or you don't have access to it. Huh. Weird. Um, where did I put that? I put that in themes. Um, the, somebody else generated the theme. They called it Keaton, and for all their placeholder image or all their placeholder images are of Michael Keaton's Batman. So, um, very interesting people. Whoever. So here's the product list. Does it really work this time? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, the source on this one. Um, basically, I, I get the React. I have a TID, which is a product list term ID uh, that's pulling in. Actually, I guess I could show to, to get that. Is it a... Nope, that was definitely not there. Includes. Paragraph. Uh, pre process paragraph. And then. Oh, here. Okay, make that a little bit bigger. Alright, so in the products paragraph, uh, we get the route to see what term we're on. Um, so you can just place this paragraph. And then um, it grabs the term, and then it actually does some searching for the actual information. 
Um, what's that term? Term get names. And then that just creates this content of, of all this, the content that's in there. And then there, what happens is as you're searching in the uh, index.js, it actually updates what you're trying to look for. And there's an endpoint product search that I created, um, I believe, in a custom module that returns the information and returns the class list. And it's fully, fully uh, sussed out in the React. And then that's only done one place. You can only place that one in there because it's getting a query selector of an ID. And there should only be one ID in your world. Any other questions, comments? Dance moves. Yeah, one dance move for those playing along at home. So. so, are you committing all the derivatives to the repo, or are you having that built um, by CI? On the or what do you recommend there? Um, with our CI, I would recommend building it and then committing it. I mean, hopefully, I mean, usually you want CI to to build everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but it. it if things are in different places, the thing about the CircleCI or any CI is it, it expects it to be themes, custom, there you are, done. But if you have one thing over here, one thing over here, you know, if you have a couple modules that need React building, then you should probably do that. That's also a good place where a library, having it as a separate library, the actual React as a separate library, that you pull in via Composer and put it into the Drupal libraries, um, and then reference it there in your custom module, then the CI for that repo builds the, the output for you as opposed to the other way around. So, so it's, if you were building like a really big one of these, you might have it some repo. Yeah, it, yeah if, if it, or if I'm using a reusable library, like if we wanted to use BART yeah. on another, you know, another Bay Area thing, then we would just put that in another repo, mm -hmm. build it, have it built out, and then make sure that we point to the right libraries. Yeah. Probably the most thing. Yeah, we're, we're really leaning towards a thin uh, repo, which means that our, compo our repos are going to be just composer files. Our custom themes are actually separate repos that are built separately as well, and then we pull the zim via uh, composer as well. Um, I'm still not happy about that, but <laughs> I'm working to make myself happy about that. It's kind of been told on high to, to do, and then... Now I got to do it, but I guess that's why we all have jobs, right? <laughs> Alrighty, well, thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll talk later. Well, I want to finish with my last slide. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs>